Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <coughs> well, it's been an early morning. Not this early. It was actually earlier. I've been up since before 4 o'clock this morning. But I um, listened to a couple of very interesting sermons and thought about a few things. And in the last sermon I was listening to, I just finished it. Because all the sermons I listened to this morning had not the theme in common, but had made statements similar to what we're going to talk about this morning. And that is uh, knowing the future, or as the title of the video is going to be, the curse of knowing the future, the blessing and the curse of knowing the future. And I want to start with a, a movie quote from a movie I saw back in the 80s. And it was a no-name movie. It was supposed to be a horror movie, but it was kind of like a, uh, you know, a, a drama, almost almost a docudrama. And uh, a guy had uh, met this other uh, guy, and there were weird things about him, and he couldn't pin it down, what it was about him. And somehow they ended up, uh, uh, several people ended up out at this guy's place that he had out in the country. Nobody knew much about this guy. He was just kind of, you know, he was a fixture in the community. But there was always something very strange about him, the way he did things. And you always kind of got the sense that he was, you know, some kind of monster or something like that. But nobody knew. Just the way he carried himself. Well, they're out there. It's in the middle of the night, and they had gotten this huge conversation about different things. And so the, the cat was out of the bag, so to speak. The movie was a B-class movie, but the acting was good. And the line this guy gave in response to the other guy was amazing to me. And it is applicable today. The other guy was asking him about, you know, because they had discovered he was a vampire. And, of course, we know vampires aren't real, but it's, it's, it's germane to the story only, uh, to, to the movie. But they found out he was a vampire, and he had been alive over 8,000 years. And they started discovering all these things that he'd seen. Starts telling him all these things. And the guy was like, what a... He was like, oh, I want to be one. He goes, what, a, what a, an amazing advantage to have, to be alive this long, to know how things are going to play out because you've seen it over and over again. The guy with the vampire was sitting at a, at a desk. And he said, no, he goes, uh, you would think it would be something that would be a blessing, but it's not. It's in no way do I see it as a blessing. And he continued with, in all my time I've been alive on this earth, I've had people that I've met, human and some like me, that became my friends, and I've had to watch them die. In all my time on this earth, I've, had, I've watched a man, had lived among men, seen things. He said, the amazing thing was to watch man from the outside of mankind being what I am and to watch man develop. He said, but the horrible thing was to watch man make the same mistakes over and over and over again. He said, nature doesn't kill, you know, circumstances don't kill, man kills. He said, man by his decisions has killed. He goes, in over 8,000 years I've seen man make the same mistakes multiple times. And in every instance, it's ended in his destruction. And he had, he had looked up from the desk, and he had a tear running out of his cheek. And he said, the most horrible thing of being what I am is having to see this over and over again and not be able to stop it or change it. And that particular line, of course, that's not verbatim. I saw the movie in the 80s, but that particular interaction kind of stuck with me and it made me think and every time I've seen where people have talked about dreams and visions or you, you've seen the, the tons of movies where the, the person knows that remember Deja Vu with um, uh, what's his name um, Denzel Washington um, other movies like that you know where they were getting glimpses into the future and you saw that, uh, or the movie with Nicolas Cage knowing, you, you saw the, that it was the life they led. <clears throat> and no matter how they portray it, 
it always comes across as the person who knows, who sees, is miserable. Because they know. Because they see. Because they're, they're stuck in this constant loop of trying to discover what's coming next. And it becomes an addiction. There's a curse with knowing the future. There's a blessing, but there's a curse. Now we apply that to us now. We know the future by, because of the Bible. We know the future because we can read in the book of Revelation. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Amos, Joel, Habakkuk. I mean, there's a myriad of books we can read that tell us things that are coming. And they all, you know, reiterate the same point. The end of man is destruction. There will be a lot of suffering. There will be a lot of torment. There will be a lot of death. We know the future. Part of our misery is the fact that we know the future. Now the Bible says, blessed is he who keeps the words of this book. In reference to the book of Revelation, but also in reference to the whole Bible. What is the blessing? Well, the blessing is you know what's coming. You know what to watch for. You know what to avoid. You know what's, you know, to, to have your heart prepared for what's coming. Whereas the rest of the world, they're just going around doing everyday things. They're not going to see it coming. It's going to hit them like a ton of bricks. It won't hit you like a ton of bricks. The world right now, the world at large right now, who are unaware of what the Bible says, even a, a lot of people that I meet that are, are supposed, supposedly Christians, and they don't know what the Bible says because they've, they've never read it. They're always blindsided. We're never blindsided. No, nothing we see surprises us because it's in the Bible. We see it. Talk about it constantly. The blessing of knowing the future is not ever being caught off guard. But there's a curse. And that curse is knowing that there are people you love and care about. There are people you've ministered to. There are people you've seen on the streets. People you've worked with that are going to die horribly. There are people that you know and interact with on a daily basis that will end up in hell. Knowing the future has a lot of aspects to it. There's a lot of blessings and there's a lot of curses. And the curses almost outweigh the blessings. Because the person who knows the future lives in a state of constant depression. <clears throat> because they know what's coming. They live in a state of constant, uh, what's the word? Melancholy. They live in a state of melancholy because they know what's coming. They know what's going to happen. They're aware of what's going to happen and they can't change it. They can't do anything about it. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Just... It's a it's a wonderful blessing. We give thanks for it almost every morning to know what's coming, to know what's happening, to know what God's will is and, and what's, what the future holds. But there's a kind of a, you know, a little bit of a chagrin there to, to it. To, you're like, well, it's okay, but it's not, it's, it's not what you would think it would be. Because you think somebody knows the future. They're, they're all amazed and excited and happy and everything. No. It's, it's not all it's cracked up to be. So you have to be a certain kind of person to know the future. Like in that movie from the 80s that I described at the beginning. You know, that guy, that vampire, you would think he would be at the pinnacle of his existence. After 8,000 years, he would have everything by the tail. And he was, he was pretty much just, I'm just here. I'm just existing. I'm not doing anything else because I already know what's going to happen. All the advances you have will do you no good and will end up being your undoing. Every time I've, he's, he told the guy every time, because they had walked outside, he said, every time I've seen advancements in human technology, I've seen the destruction of humankind. He said, your, your advancements, he goes, I live out here off the grid because I've seen what the advancements of humankind do. He goes, it's going to be your undoing. And, and the people that were listening to him were just like, this is not what we expected. <laughs> so when when you read into the Bible and you read about what's coming and what's going to happen, there's there's a certain kind of a disheartening framework to it. 
because you know. Uh, it, it probably explains why Jesus was kind of melancholy and the way he did things because he knew the people he was talking to, people he was looking at. I mean, he knew more better than anybody. He knew who was going to believe and who wasn't. He knew who was going to, I'm talking to this person, this is a dead man. And what I'm saying is going to completely miss him and he's going to go on to destruction. And the apostles, when they had the Holy Spirit put on them, they knew. And they were able to see, and you can see, like even the attitude that's being present, presented, the, 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 the frame of mind of the apostles that's being presented. And when I read it, I always get this sense that they, that they rejoiced when, when, you know, the things happened that proved the, the Lord and, and they rejoiced that the blessing of the Lord had come upon them. But there was always this sense of melancholy, the sense of, of just... I know what's coming, and I'm not happy about it, and I don't want to see it anymore. Paul made it very clear. He goes, I, I, I'd rather leave. I'd rather leave this earth and go be with the Lord because I don't want to see what's coming. And I know what's coming, and it pains me to know it. And this even, to me, comes across in a lot of his speeches. This comes across in the book of Acts, I think, a lot, too, that they weren't just happy-go-lucky running around and everything was great. You know, they, they knew what was coming, not just their death, but the death of so many people around them. And they lived with the knowledge of knowing that there's a bad, bad time coming. And we may see it. And a lot of these people that we interact with every day, people I shake hands with, people I hug, people I, I talk to and bless and tell them I love them, may die. Now, let me add one more aspect to this. Even though the blessing is not being taken off guard. The curse is, is knowing these horrible things. There's another blessing that comes in at the end. And this blessing causes the blessing of knowing the future to overwhelm the curse of knowing the future. And that blessing is hope. Because when you know the future, when you can see, and, and, and this is just from our perspective, the, that we see in a mirror darkly, but when you know certain details about what's coming, when you know and you see these things start to unravel, and it's like, well, I know what's coming next. I, I can read it right here. I know what's coming next. I see it here. And you know certain people in your life or that have been in your life, maybe on the bad side of that, there's a hope that comes, a blessing of hope. And that is the hope that maybe the seeds I planted will grow. Maybe the Lord will get to them before this time comes. Maybe the right words will come to me at the right time and they'll be saved. Maybe the Lord will have mercy and open this person's eyes and heart to the truth. I hope that the work that I'm doing will have some effect on somebody somewhere. And I've been blessed enough to see that manifestation of that in this channel in two and a half years. It's been wonderful. It happened just recently. But that hope outweighs any curse that comes with knowing the future. We can know all there is to know. And it won't change anything. We can know all the details about everything from this point in our lives forward it won't change anything because we can't affect those things we can't we can go in and can tell a person this is what's going to happen and they'll still and I've, there's been movies about this and they'll still go do it hey don't go here because this is going to happen and you're going to be there when it happens don't do it and they don't listen they go anyway that's man's way when his when his mind is closed when his heart is shut up that's man's way is to walk on and be punished, even knowing the truth. So that blessing of hope, because we know that the three greatest things are faith, hope, and love, greatest being love. That hope instills that love in us, that we love them more. Even though we know the future, we love them more. We love them enough to tell them the truth, to warn them, hey, you're not going to believe me, but this is, this is what's coming. <clears throat> and to act on that now there's a few scriptures that talk about this knowing the future Jeremiah 29 11 watch what happens here we're just going to read a few of them 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now we know what's going to happen. We know what's coming. But look at what God is doing. He goes, I'm going to give you a future. You have no future now. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you a hope of what's coming. That hope is what supersedes all these other things that we have. Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in the mind of man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. See, you're going to see as we go through the next couple of verses, God is the one who knows the future and knows what to do with the future. We don't know from his perspective. So you have to be a certain kind of person to be able to handle that kind of understanding and knowledge. It takes a certain kind of individual, a certain kind of, of entity or, or thought process or a certain kind of heart to be able to handle that. God is the only one who has that and knows that and it is to him a blessing. Because he knows the future, he can work things out for the betterment of his children. It's different for us. But this is why it has to be God that has this knowledge. This is, it's, this is why we can't have all this knowledge. This is why we can't know what comes after. Only a little tiny bit in the book of Revelation. But this is why we can't know what's beyond. Because we would use it wrong and we don't know how to handle it. But God does. That's why it is important that it is him that has this knowledge. Isaiah 55, 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God talking. Neither are my ways, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. He is different from us. It is important that he knows the future because he knows who will be saved and how they'll be saved. He knows who will turn and how they will turn. And he knows who won't. He can handle it. We can't. If you knew who in your life was going to heaven and who in your life was going to hell, it would destroy you. We can't handle it. We're not able to process that type of information. Give me just one second. Sorry, I felt a sneeze coming on. I didn't want to sneeze into the microphone. Romans 8.28 And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Excuse me. God knows these things, so he works these things out even though we may not know them, he works these things out for our betterment. Now, in the case of this video and what we're talking about here, we know what's coming in the future. What's God doing? How is he taking that and working that out for our betterment? We'll look at what we're going through and what we're enduring and how it's creating a sense of peace, a sense of, of patience in us. It's teaching us how to be temperate. It's teaching us how to, how to have some form of understanding for others. God is working these things out for our betterment. Now, from our perspective, there is a, a, you know, there's a pretty big negative that's attached to knowing what we know. But there's a hope, and God manifests that hope, and He manifests things that will benefit that hope and will develop and and fulfill that hope in us. So there's a blessing and a curse to this, but we have to be a certain kind of person to be able to handle knowing it. Psalm 139.4, even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. Before I even speak it, before I even think it, the Lord has already, he's already got it. He can handle that. He can handle that type of information. We can't. We struggle with it. If you already knew, and it was funny because in the past when I was a kid, uh, I would do this sometimes. Uh, a thought would hit me as a person was passing me, and I would say it. And they would spin around and look and go, excuse me? How did you know what I was thinking? Now, I'm not, I don't have that, that gift. It was just something that would hit every now and then. Uh, and so I would do that. And I don't know if it was reasonable deduction or what it was that I was figuring out how that person was doing. I did it to my brother one time and it freaked him out. He didn't talk to me for three days. Um, but there was no glory or blessing in knowing that stuff. I've watched people making decisions in that, hey, y'all... Please listen to me. Don't do this because this is going to end wrong. You're about to make a big mistake. And they would mock me and make fun of me. And the horror, I mean, it was a blessing to note, to see what was going on and go, oh, I know where this is going to end because I've seen it before. The horror was knowing that they were going to do it anyway and there was nothing I could do to stop it. 
and to watch it happen. Knowing the future has consequences. Some are good, some are bad. 1 John 3, 20. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. When I make a mistake, God already knew I was going to make that mistake. He justified me. When I stumble, God already knew I was going to stumble. He prepared a way. When we get into interactions with people and we don't quite say the right thing or say it the right way in our mind, God has already, he already knew what was going to happen and he has already taken care of that. Now, a lot of people get into the argument on this. Well, if God already knows, where's free will? God lets us make our own choices, but he, he flips things to work to the betterment, even if we make a bad choice. He doesn't change our choice. He gives us free will, but he will take that bad situation and ma manipulate it to make it out for our betterment. Bad situation will still happen. That's why people still suffer. Well, I'm saved. Why haven't I been delivered from this? Why haven't I been healed? Well, maybe it's because... We even had laid hands on him and it still didn't heal him. Well, it's not a failure on your part. It may be because it's God's will that, I, that a person goes through that. And if that's the case, it may be because he's teaching them something. He's not going to take away the bad situation. He's going to work it out to their betterment. Because he knows best how this is going to work. It may be that giving somebody a healing is the worst thing that could happen to them. Because it could cause them to go into a state of pride. So we have to stop, step back and think about it. Knowing the future, is it right for you to change it or try to change it? Because that's why God doesn't do it. He knows the future. He doesn't change it. He just works or goes on to work to his will. It's actually very intricate and very exciting to see what he's doing and to see how it plays out and to start to get an understanding of how he does these things. Because what that does is you knowing the future the way you do, knowing about the Bible, is, is it helps you explain better in terms they will understand without just giving them the scripture and say this and they don't understand it anyway but you can you can give it to them in a different way basically doing a work like similar to what god does i'm going to let them make a mistake but i'm going to work it to the advantage sometimes you've got to let people make mistakes i've done it mechanic wise i've let them make mistakes and then when they're like why didn't you tell me i thought you were a mechanic oh, wait a minute i let you do that i wanted you to see for yourself what was going to happen now here's how we fix it. You take a situation, you manipulate it to make it work out for the better one. Because sometimes we have to get hurt to learn a lesson. Sometimes we have to make a mistake to learn a lesson. Sometimes the only way we're going to know the right way is to do it the wrong way. God knows that too, and he works with that. So there's a blessing to knowing the future. But there's also a curse because you know you're going to have to see some things. Um, I'm going to end on James 4 right here. This is really good. James 4, 13 through 17. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him it is sin. So we can't say, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And it's funny because I've had, I had this conversation with my wife about buying another house um, and, and moving to a different location. And I told her, and it was funny because I already knew the, knew what was coming, but I couldn't say anything because it wouldn't be received right. I had to wait and let it, let it work its way out and manifest. And she finally got to the place where she was like, I don't know, I guess we're just going to be stuck here. Then the opportunity came where I could say, okay, well, I haven't said anything because I think this is a situation where we're getting too presumptuous in thinking this is what we should be doing. I told her, I think the Lord's will is for us to do something else. So I'm not saying yay or nay. I'm waiting to see what he wants us to do. Because he will manifest the change when the time is right. And it was this pas these passages I was thinking of when I said that. I already knew what was coming. I already knew the future. But I couldn't tell her. 
until the time was right and she was ready to receive it. And she has. And it's relieved a lot of her stress. Because when she wasn't ready, she wouldn't have received it. She would have gotten more stressed out and, and probably got mad at me. But we worked it out. The Lord worked it out to make it work for the betterment of all. So now we understand that there may be a different plan going on. And so we, we operate within that now. We're, we're taking more time to think about, wait a minute, it may not be the Lord's will that we do this. So we're not going to do this. Because he may have something else planned and we're waiting for the manifestation of that. Learning patience. And this is what it comes down to ultimately. If when we do know the future, we know that there's a rapture coming. I'm going to touch on that in just a second. We know there's wars coming. We know there's all these things coming. The curse of knowing that is knowing that there's people that we know that are going to suffer through this or and die in this. The blessing of knowing this is the fact that we know it's coming. We see it. That tells us the Lord is coming. But the other blessing is a hope, a hope in that the Lord will open the eyes of those we love so that they will come with us. Now, and this is a, a subject I've harped on quite a bit, and I want to touch on it just for a second because it applies here. So many people are trying to find the date of the rapture. And I know this is becoming a sore subject, but it has to be addressed. Do you really want to know the day the rapture is going to happen? Ask yourself honestly, do you really want to know the day? You see what happens just when people pre pretend or make a pretense of thinking they know what the day is. You see the damage it causes. You see the hatred shown by people. You see the anger and frustration of people. Just when they think they know what the day is. What if you really did know the day? You couldn't even tell people. You couldn't even tell them. If the Lord came to you and said, it's going to be on this day, at this time, in this time zone, is when it, when it will all start at, in this year. And it was a few years down the road. And you knew it without a shadow of a doubt. Because the Lord told you himself. You couldn't tell anyone. They would hate you and you would be ostracized because people can't know this. It causes problems. It causes issues. Now, some people will take that as an advantage. And they will live like the devil. They will get into the most disgusting things, trying all kinds of weird stuff out. Well, I got time. I can go and I can do all this and then I can go to the Lord and repent later. And that's not... It can't happen. So think about all the evil that would be done if a person didn't know the day. Think about all the, all the evil and terrible things they would do to other people. And then just think they can just go repent and everything will be fine if they did know the day. Think about all the people that would die or even kill themselves if they did know the day. You can't know the day of the rapture. That's a future knowledge that would destroy many people. So what do we do? We have hope. We know that day is coming. But it instills a sense of hope in us. And while we're waiting, a sense of patience in us. And we learn to walk in the ways of the Lord, even knowing some aspects of the future, even knowing some of the terrible aspects of the future. We walk in the patience of the Lord, knowing that He has these things under control and He will manifest these things the way they're supposed to be. And all things will work to the betterment of those He loves. See, all His Word works together. So when we say, well, I know this is going to happen, maybe not when we say oh yeah I already I, I can I already know the future on this one this is going to be this way maybe not because see the Lord like he says up here my thoughts are not your thoughts where is it at Proverbs nope it's not Proverbs it's Isaiah my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways the way God does things is completely different than us. So what we think we know, like down here in James, we think we know we're going to go do this. Better think again. Now we read in the Bible, we know what's coming. We see it. We see the aspects of it on the horizon now. Is it presumptuous for us to say, I know this is going to happen because of the Bible, or this is what the Lord said and I'm watching for it? What's, what's the right answer? And which one brings hope? 
Now, I know there's going to be a millennial reign. Why? The Bible said so. Is it proper for me to say, because I know there's going to be a millennial reign, I'm going to be there? I hope. Lord, I hope to be in your presence. I hope to be in your grace. I hope to stand with you during that time. I can't presume or be presumptuous about anything, even if I know the details. What that does is puts me it puts me in a place of not knowing, not having so much of the of the horror or the curse of knowing the future. Instead it's more of the hope. I know a lot of people are gonna die in the tribulation. But I'm not gonna presume to know who. There's my hope. That the people that I know and love will be changed and will get saved and will be in the rapture. It's all about perspective. You can know all the things in the world, it's, but if your perspective is wrong, it's done. it do, does you no good. It's all about perspective. So when we do something like come up with a date for the rapture, what are we doing? Are we doing the right thing? Are we saying, well, supposedly it's going to be on this day, or hey, it could be on this day. Look at the evidence I found. We're trying to prove our point, and we're wrong over and over and over again. What are we doing to people? Because honestly, that's one of those things that we should never know. If you knew the day you were going to die, is that, is that anything that's going to benefit you? If you knew the day and the hour and the location of your death, what benefit would that be for you? Nothing. It would do nothing for you. Except destroy you and cause you to crawl into a hole and not live life. So one of the things about knowing the future is a lot of people let it consume them. They read through the Bible and they're like, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to hold up in the mountains. There are people that have dug bunkers underground and live in them. And they're going to spend the rest of their life there. The next day it's coming. Oh, no, the next month it's coming. Oh, the next year it's coming. I know this. I've talked to a few of them. Well, one guy has like 15 conexes buried in a hillside. And he had it all landscaped. You can't tell. And he lives in it. He says, I stay in there. It was because I know it's coming. But that's not the purpose of knowing. We're supposed to live. We're supposed to continue. We're supposed to keep moving forward, redeeming the time. We're supposed to keep doing what we were called to do. Because there's nothing we can do to hide from it. There's nothing we can do to protect ourselves from it. We have to look to God for these things. The blessing of knowing the future is knowing God has control. We know what's coming, but we know God has control. The curse is knowing that a lot of people are going to suffer, but that brings the blessing of hope. Hope in that our Lord will change them and will turn them towards the truth. So what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments what you think. Is it a blessing or is it a curse? Or is it both? To know the future, even in detail. And how has, knowing, how has knowing the future been a benefit or a curse to you? Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and to sing praises under your holy name. And to give thanks to you for the wonderful blessing of knowing. We know the future because of your word. Your word tells us the future. Lord, when you came to this earth, you told us, this is what's coming. This is what's happening. And we see in your word that it had a negative effect on believers and disciples. It caused them to pause. It caused them to look down. A lot of them walked away because they knew the truth. But you did that on purpose. Because those who want you, those who desire to be in your presence, take that information, look at it. Well, I see a blessing here. Even though there's a curse of knowing the future, there's a blessing here. And while it did cause depression and a sense of melancholy in a lot of the people, and I can read that in your word, knowing the future created a sense of urgency. You need to know the truth, people. This is what's coming. Be ready. Get saved now. Then you don't have to worry about it. Then it won't be a problem. So we can see that there's a, a blessing and a curse. Well, it's a double blessing. It's two blessings but, and, a, and a curse to knowing the future. 
But Lord, I have to give thanks to you for knowing the future, for telling us what's coming. Because when you told us what was coming, we were, we're now able to look at the world and see that it is almost your time. And so, even though we know the future, we rejoice. Because it's almost your time to take your kingdom. To reign and to rule. To be our king. So, a blessing comes from knowing the future. Even though we know there's a lot of pain and suffering coming. Even though we know there's judgment coming. But even though there's a curse associated with knowing the future, there's a blessing and the blessing overwhelms the curse. The blessing of knowing the future and having hope that you will change the hearts of those who aren't changed yet. That you will redeem those who aren't redeemed. That you will open the door for salvation for those who aren't yet saved, who have not yet turned. That the seeds that we plant now will grow in the fires of the tribulation. So though we have a curse of knowing the future, our hope overwhelms that curse and that we know that you and your love will work all things to the betterment of those you, you love, will work to the betterment of your children. So we thank you for knowing the future. Knowing the future tells us what to watch for, what to look for, and where to be when the time is right, what to be doing while we wait. It gives us a sense of patience and temperance. It, it teaches us to learn, to slow down and enjoy what we have and learn more about you and about what's right and about how to help others. To walk and to work in a way, in, in a sense of, of patient acceptance. I forgot, I'm get, let me get the right words here. Patient acceptance of the inevitable. but a, a, an urgency, a, a proper urgency of what's coming. So when I look at it from my personal standpoint, Father, knowing the future hurts. It has a pain that comes with it, but the blessing and the rejoicing and the hope that comes from knowing it overwhelms, overpowers that. And while I know a lot of people that I know, a lot of people in my life, people I've known all my life, a lot of them are going to suffer. I also know that you will answer my prayers and you will work those things out for those people according to your will to get them saved. And not all of them will. Not all of them want to be. But the ones who will, you will bring them that salvation to fruition. You will cause those seeds to grow. And we will stand together in your presence. There is a, a horrible temptation to knowing the future. And a lot of people, when that temptation is satisfied and they learn the future, they regret knowing it. Well, Father, instead, when we, when we reach that point, change in us that regret to hope. Make that regret into a patient continuance in redeeming the time and working towards the future. That we know things are going to get bad. We know things are going to unfold. Your word tells us these things. It tells us in a lot of detail what's going to unfold and how bad it's going to be. But, and you've never left the world without warning. But, even though we know, we still have hope and we still rejoice because we know it is in your hands and because we are in your presence because we are saved and redeemed and kept by you we know that it will pass us by we know that we are not we are not going to partake in it you will remove your people before these things that's what your word says so we operate in that hope and in that patient continuance Father, make us to redeem the time. Make us to recognize the signs that you've given us in your word and the signs we see in the world today. Make us to walk in hope and an expectation of you fulfilling your promises like you always do. As we watch things unfold, as we watch the history of man wind down to its final event, to its conclusion, as we know what's coming, we see it manifesting already in the world. That we will look to you for all the answers, look to you for all the truth, and we'll look to you for that hope. That hope in redemption. That hope in rescue. That hope in the full realization of our salvation. 
So, Father, I thank you for knowing the future. I thank you that you know the future better than anybody because you know how to handle it. But I thank you that we know it too. I thank you that you gave us this wonderful book that tells us the future. Even though there's negative that comes with it, there's so much more positive. And it's all, it all depends on the perspective. And I'm thankful and glad that you teach us to be the kind of person, the kind of, have the kind of mentality you have towards these things, that they won't overwhelm us or overtake us, but instead we will walk continually in patience and in hope and in prayer and looking forward to what's better and what's coming, to the glory of our Lord, to the kingdom of our Lord, to the praise of our Lord. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. We thank you for your great love. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for a morning prayer. Little, little weird topic, but it's interesting because there's a lot of times we sit and we don't think about these things, we don't contemplate these things. And when we do, we start to realize, wow, I never realized that aspect of that before. And when you really, really take the time to think about it, and you think about it from a godly frame of mind, your perspective becomes different. You see a disaster looming in a person's life, and you see that everything they're doing is going to take them head on into it. And there's times where you desperately want to warn them, and you can't. They won't accept it. They won't receive it. Some close friends of mine have a son who's been diagnosed with several uh, disorders, um, not physical, but, but mental and emotional. And I wanted to tell them he has the boy has several demons how do you tell somebody that and, and the, they were even christian but they're not in the place where most christians are because they, they don't operate that way but how do you tell somebody that you you can see the demons how do you tell somebody that they are, their son has demons how do, how do you address something like that? And you can see the destruction coming. You can see what the future holds for the situation. How do you tell somebody that? How do you address that? And how do we live with the horror of knowing that and knowing there's nothing we can do? There's glory and there's praise and there's worship in the hope that we will pray for that individual and things will change that we will ask the Lord to intervene on their behalf and deal with that situation. Jesus said, some of these demons come out with prayer and fasting. Some you can cast out, but some it's prayer and fasting. Sometimes we can't tell somebody the truth because they won't receive it. But we can definitely always pray for that individual. If we can't share things from the book of Revelation because of a fellow Christian or a fellow believer or even just a regular everyday person can't accept it, they can't, they can't receive knowing the truth and knowing the future, we can pray for them. We can pray the Lord will open their eyes because he knows the right way to deliver that information. He knows the right way to help that person. If we are struggling in depression because we know the future, because we know what's coming, because we look at people and we're like, that person... I'm going by what the Bible says that, that, that there's, a, there's a problem with the, this person and I don't know how to tell them. We know. We have an advocate. We know we can go to the, our high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ. We can pray for them. And we have that hope. We live in that hope that the Lord will use his will to change that person. So if you're struggling with knowing the future, if it's pain causing you pain, know this. You know the future for a reason. He's shown you this and brought you to this understanding for a reason. And it may be for you to help someone else understand. It may be for you to pray for others. It may be to give you a greater sense of the hope in waiting for the Lord, even though we see these things and know these things are happening. No matter what, God has it all under control. And in our case, knowing the future by the Bible 
we know it is definitely going to go that way and happen that way because that's how God's word works. So we have hope and we rejoice in that hope knowing that the Lord has all of this in the palm of his hand and he will not let anything go outside of his will. Hopefully this made sense to you guys because I, I, I wasn't led to anything else but this. Hopefully this, made, hopefully this made sense and this maybe will help somebody get a better grasp on this. Maybe give somebody some peace over this because I know a lot of people struggle with knowing what's coming. And instead of trying to pad it or sugarcoat it or find a way to, to, to ignore it or remove it from our lives, we should embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace and give thanks that we know what's coming. Even if there's something terrible attached to knowing that information, we know what's coming. We will not be blindsided by it. And that puts us in a very unique position to help others understand it too. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you in the next video.